Hello, my wonderful people, my viewers and subscribers all over the world. Good morning to you all. Please, oh, I just want to use this opportunity to make this very important announcement. Uh, you might not be hearing my normal voice because uh, I'm having some challenges. Uh, just uh, got hit yesterday by uh, one wicked uh, cough, but uh, the situation is under control. So please, whatever, whichever way you see my voice, please manage me like that way because. Uh, I must discharge my duty because that is uh, the, 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 the contract I have assigned with my subscribers, viewers, my family members, those who know what I'm doing, and those ones who don't appreciate what I'm doing. But the truth has to be told. I must discharge my duty, and that is what I am doing. So please, anywhere you see my voice, manage it that way. But the most important thing there is the wisdom and the news and i pass to the public so that's what matters a lot so good morning ladies and gentlemen depending on where you are this very point in time uh, before we proceed please hear this uh, breaking news it's a very big insult in the face of the evils i must uh, uh, be sincere with you, uh, all my fans out there everyone that is care care to listen because uh, this thing that is happening in nigeria it has become a norm that every president that is coming once it's not from the Igbo extractions, they will sideline and marginalize the Igbos in all the angles. Imagine this king coming government. See, you don't see the Igbos finish. That there's nothing you can give to the Igbos other than a speaker. What kind of controversial office is that? Uh, not even speaker, say deputy speaker of the House of Representatives by, by name, Benjamin uh, Carlo. Which is a very very big big blow and very big insult to the southeast entirely in general because the affairs of this nation whether they like it or not southeast is contributing if not half of it or more than half in this country that keeps the country going because it's only the an Igbo man you, you can see every part of the country doing amazingly well buying lands and building houses building companies how many companies that dangote have in the southeast you see how wicked these people are. He cannot do that because he, he don't want to provide jobs for our youth down there in the southeast. But look at our people. Anywhere they go, they must build factory. Employ the locals. In other words, reducing criminality in that very area. Well, how many hours man or Yoruba man you can find in the southeast having mansions or buying a hectare, acres of lands for farming or for building anything. No. They rather prefer to live in a kiosk, in a kiosk, no matter how much they make from selling their cows or their fish or their onions or their farm produce. So in other words, it's a very big blow to the face of the Igbos. I must say this without no atom of regret. For them to be given the Southeast at large, just Deputy Speaker in the House of Assembly, the House of Representatives. So, my wonderful people, please hear this breaking news. It is an insult to Igbos. Coalition rejects APC zoning of Deputy Speaker to the Southeast. When I hear them, and as you hear it, I hope you never subscribe. You must subscribe now. Turn on the notification button so that you'll be notified each time I come live or post something new on my channel or another channel related to my channel. Have a nice day. And as you are sharing, Please make sure you are commenting, liking any of my content. So let us proceed with a new to have for us this very morning. Let us take the headlines first. 2023 general elections. Our only mama, the the World Bank, uh, uh, W uh, what they call itself, Okoji Wala, the chairman of the World Trade Bank, yeah, the World Bank Trade. How do they used to pronounce it? I've even forgotten. She has come out now to lay her voice on what happened or what transpired in these 2023 general elections. And what she said, we broke your heart. She said that 2023 elections broke a lot of trust to Nigerians. To over millions of Nigerians, 2023 broke their trust. You cannot tell me that you, you gather the youth and tell them they must come out to vote. They must get their PVC. Quit the trusted Simply because he made a promise that uh, this beavers is a game changer. And at the end of the day, 4 a.m. in the morning on uh, March 1st, he went ahead to announce a winner. Even when complaints full ground, 
Even when people are sleeping and uh, give uh, what they call it a return ticket. <laughs> Nigeria is simply a joke. Mahmoud is supposed to be in a jail if it's a country that is working. He's supposed to be in a jail. That is where they will lock, lock Mahmoud. They will lock him, finish, and throw away the key. Maybe before they will find the key, he must have been rotten. But look at Nigeria. They are celebrating him. He is working freely. Enjoying millions and billions of naira they paid him to rig that election. But God is watching. Last, last, we go do all right. So let us continue. 25% in Abuja. Remember the court yesterday that seated in Abuja where Abuja residents sued the INEC and the, 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 the incoming president select that he, as the governor of the central, uh, uh, no, federal capital territory, FCT, must get that 25% and he must be popular in that area before he can lead them because any president in the in Abuja or Asorok is automatically the governor to the federal capital territory and the residents living in those area. So the court have seized that case. You understand? To another end, because they want to stop the swearing in of the presidents select by INEC. Look at the news. 25% in Abuja court takes, takes fresh action on suit, seeking to stop Tulumbo's swearing in. And I remember this man, the video that is making uh, waves on the internet now, where he named Bishen Kuti, where they talk say, no, but today he started to slap police. Where they talk say, police no go do him anything, saying they in right. He get evidences. He get everything. Last, last, handcuff. You don't enter his hand. They don't arrest him. Make on take things easy. Make on take it things easy. And I said no. Unless uh, Tramadol, Ibo, and Onkolos. That is what you people are using these days. Loving a police officer. I don't support police brutality. I don't su support police manhandling and assaulting its citizens that have sworn that they have sworn to protect. But I'm against you slapping a police officer simply because you think nobody can do you anything. Or maybe you see that policeman is a cobra or maybe no any rank and you feel you can slap him anyhow. Now your two hands have become one hand. I can't I can't have a go for okay. Yeah, when I change you go now. There was no need to handcuff Saint Kuti. Uh she was signing rags to the viral video of the young man where they handcuff him. They, 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 and they even detain himself. He has been in detention now. May 29, this one is uh, IDO police crying, you know. <clears throat> I don't know how I do all this, our security operatives. That, that was how uh, uh, DSS come out the other time and tell us there are some people that are implanting an uh, interim government and you are coming to, coming to tell Nigerians. Why not get them arrested? Prosecute them if you have every evidence that they are planning that. Now, it's for the general police don't come out now to tell us that there are some political allies trying to protect hand over to Tunumbu is the general of police. Shame to Nigerian uh, security architecture. So if you know all those, all those political parties, or are, they, are they above the law? Or are they equally your paying masters? And you are coming to the general public to, to cry. Hey! hey woo. Since I've gone to this way now, that means everybody uh, to your tent owe Israel. Because that is exactly the point. That is exactly the point. I cannot see the reason why a police officer, Inspector General of Police for that matter, coming to cry that some people are trying to forsake. If you know those people, why can't you get them arrested? Shame to your office, Inspector General of Police. You are not worried to be called Inspector General of Police and that uh, uh, DSS, uh, what they call it, and the DSS uh, uh, DG, uh, Bichi. You people are not worried to handle any. Any, uh, 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 what do you call it? Security office in our country. Because this uh, Adamu, this Adamu, Adamu, uh, 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 Baba and Kali, every time you make nyash like woman, I don't know whether you'll be this thing. That's why you don't the worker. Stay in one place. Come on to come to talk the, to the Nigerian people. You cannot. Maybe you and the president don't sign now. Nah. Look at yourself. On a, on a, on a, on a, this himself. The man said they have an eyelid. Ah, uh, police force, police force, my food. So, my wonderful police, uh, if you 
are out there hearing my voice, I want you to do what? To touch your seatbelt because we are about to take the real news of this morning. The decision of the All Progressive Congress, APC, to zone the position of Deputy Speaker in the House of Representatives have been rejected by the coalition of Southeast Youth Leaders. The group stated that the move by the APC is an insult to the political sensibility of the Igbo and the stance rejected in its entirety. Kosiel, in a statement signed by his president, Comrade Goodluck Ibem, and Publicity Secretary, Comrade Okemur, said the zoning arrangement that led to the emergence of Benjamin Nicarlo as the APC preferred candidate for the position is shredded in controversies. The group alleged that based on the figures from the elections, it is clear that Carlo betrayed the APC presidential candidate, Senator Bola Amber Tunumbu, the gubernatorial candidate of APC in Aba, in Abia State, Chief Ikechi Emenike, as well as his, his political boss, Senator Oji Uzo Carlo. It added that beyond the issue of Carlo, the position of Deputy Speaker for the entire Southeast is a delegation of the region in the APC led federal government and they can't be eating crumbs. The statement added that the region believes P2B will reclaim his mandate in court and warn the APC to stop distracting them with such low offices or low offers in the political hierarchy of Nigeria. Their statement read, this charade by the APC is an insult to the political sensibility of Ndibo and will reject it in his entirety, no matter those behind it. The circumstances surrounding the emergence of Benjamin Ricardo, who the party has microzoned the office of Deputy Speaker uh, to, following the February 25th presidential and national uh, assembly elections, are still mired in a lot of controversies. To make the whole picture clear, on the 25th of February 2023, the presidential and the national assembly elections were conducted simultaneously in our, in other state. For example, Peter B, the Labour Party presidential candidate, pulled 327,095 votes, whereas Ahmed Tunumbu of the APC presidential candidate got 8,914 votes. Yet, Benjamin Nicarlo, the APC House of Reps candidate, was controversially announced as the winner of Ben the Federal Constituency with 10,020 votes, while the Labour Party candidate scored 6,688 votes. The question uh, begging for an answer is how will the votes of Ben the local government area for House of Reps be higher than the presidential votes from the other 16 local government areas of the state in elections? Presidential and the parliamentary that were conducted co uh, concurrently nationwide. The question is left for INEC to answer. <clears throat> the political landscape of Nigeria has a known trajectory, especially in the Southeast, where voters vote massively for parties. How can a single local government uh, outvote? An entire state. You are right, you. You are very, very right. Benjamin Carlo, it should be known, it should be known, betrayed the APC presidential candidate, Senator Bola Ahmed Tunumbu, and the gubernatorial candidate of APC in other state, Chief Ikechi Emenike, <coughs> which is evident in the votes of APC got in Bende, local government, and also betrayed his political boss, Senator Oji Uzo Carlo, who picked him and gave him all necessary support and assistance to be elected into the House of Reps in 2019. While the political goal and aspirations of Ndibu is beyond the post of the Senate President, we cannot talk of endorsing Benjamin Carlo to represent the political interests of the entire Southeast as a federal parliamentary parliamentarian holding the post of the Deputy Speaker. Igbo are a major ethnic group in Nigeria and cannot be relegated to the background by the APC-led federal government, no matter the scheming or agenda. The post of deputy speaker 
is beneath the political aspirations of Ndigo and will reject and shall continue to resist it. We call on women, sons, and daughters of Igbo land to disregard the endorsement of Benjamin Nicarlo as the deputy speaker in the House of Assembly. To those who wish to feed from crumbs, your political days are numbered because P2B is coming back to take his mandate. We remain steadfast in the P2B project and call on all political forces of the APC using phantom characters and phony groups to create factions in the Labour Party in order to minimize obese legal chances to the disease from their actions. It is only a sellout that we, that we throw away a mandate the entire nation gave its region just to accept the office of the Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, which is the seventh position in the country's hierarchy of political power and offices. Nigeria is our nation, and nobody, whether individual or group, can relegate the Igbo to the background of politics. 2023 elections broke a lot of trust, Ngozi Okonjo Iwala laments. The director general of the World Trade Organization, WTO, Ngozi Okonjo Iwala, has said a lot of trust has been broken following the conduct of the 2023 general elections. Nigerian News reports that Okonjo Iwala stated this on Monday during an induction ceremony organized for the elected governors in Abuja, the nation's capital. Okonjo Iwala stated that no government can achieve growth and progress without first of all building trust, adding that there cannot be a nation building without the citizens trusting their political leaders. And that is the problem we are about to enter, if they ever succeeded in uh, electing this man as the president elect of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or president elect of the INEC, not for Nigerians. She said, if taking the wider global context into action is one uh, paraguistic for successful nation building, another paraguistic is trust and the sense of common purpose, according to Ngozi Okonjo Iwala. I remain convinced that a better future is within our collective grasp, but to move ahead and seize it, we will need political and business leaders at the state and national levels to form a compact in pursuit of pro-growth and pro-development policies in Nigeria. We ought to be seeking to double our growth rate and sustain that, that higher growth until we attain upper middle income status. We can also aim to double Nigeria's share of world trade from 0.33% to 0.66% within a decade. To build such a compact, we need trust. Nation building is impossible in the absence of trust. Perhaps, especially so in Nigeria, even before independence, the, the generation of leaders that led us to freedom identified how important trust will be to our nation's success. Honorable Governors, let us be candid. Trust in Nigeria has always been fragile, but following the election, a lot of trust has been broken. Nigeria is a country with no social contract, meaning that Nigeria political leaders have never been able to agree with each other to stick to a common set of principles, values, and policies that consistently deliver for their citizens regardless of their ethnic group or political persuasions. The former Minister of Finance said the governors elect need to rebuild trust through their policies and programs to regain the support of all Nigerians. Emphasis on all Nigerians, not on specific set of people. She added, Excellencies, you have a lot of healing to do within your states and between them through your words, deeds and policies. You need to demonstrate to Nigerians that they are equally loved, that they can settle and do businesses in any part of the country without fear. I love Nigeria deeply and I want to feel welcome in any part of the, this country where each time I'm in the country. Narr narratives about countries matter for capital allocation decisions, especially for emerging markets and developing economies. When we have presented a, pos a positive story in the past, 
backed by a credible reform trajectory. Foreign investments has followed. When we have shown that we are we are cognizant that we account for around 70% of the West African sub-region's GDP and 23% of Sub-Saharan Africa's GDP. And we have run our country and economy responsibly to benefit not ju just us, but the region and sub-region we have gained respect. We must continue to recognize that Nigeria has an outsized role to play at home and abroad, and we must manage our country better not just for ourselves, but also for the rest of the Africans. 25% in Abuja caught text phrase action on suit, seeking to stop Tunumbu's swearing in. The Federal High Court in Abuja has set a fresh date for the continuation of the suit, seeking to stop the swearing in of Aswaji Bolame Tunumbu as the presence of the Nigerian biased. Of, okay, of Nigerian based on the controversy regarding the 25% of votes in Abuja, the Federal Capital Territory, FCT. The court on Monday heard that there are three questions those who fear file the case must answer through their lawyers before the case can proceed. Nigerians recall that the suit was filed by Messrs. Anye Bunam Okoye, David Aza Jeffrey. David Adiza, Jeffrey Uche, or Sango Paul and Chibi Kenwachuku, who describe themselves as registered voters of the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. They are seeking the following reliefs. A declaration that no state of the country is at the same time the Federal Capital for any purpose whatsoever, including in particular under Section 134, Subsection 2B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. A declaration that no candidate in the February 25th presidential election in the country may validly be declared elected president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria without that candidate obtaining at least 25% of the total votes cast in Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. A declaration that no candidate in the February 25th presidential election may validly be sworn in as president and commander in chief of the armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria without such candidates having obtained 25% of the votes in the Federal Capital Territory Abuja. A declaration that the following February 25th presidential election until a successor is determined in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution and sworn in the terms of office of His Excellency Muhammad Buhari, GCON, as President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, subsists and endures in accordance with the provisions of the Section 135 Subsection 1A of the Constitution. An order setting aside or suspending any declaration and or issuance of a certificate of return to any candidate in the February 25th presidential election in the country as having been elected, save and accept it is judiciary, it amends with finality that such candidates fulfill the conditions stated in Section 134, Subsection 2B of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Attorney General of the Federation and the Chief Justice of Nigeria, CJN, were cited in the matter as first and second defendants, respectively. However, at the hearing of the Monday, uh, hearing on Monday before Justice Iyang Eko, the judge told the plaintiff's lawyer, Chu Sumachuku, that the case had been adjourned to May 18 to allow him to get answers to certain questions. Justice Eko said the lawyer must address the court on local standing, right to appear in the court, decision and whether his case is already before the presidential election petition tribunal. And that is also we take CMO, make another way to go because we still have a lot of news to give to my people here. <laughs> there was no need though, to handcuff Tien Kuti. She Usane react to the viral video where this young man had been handcuffed because he refused to learn. Former Senator She Usane has reacted to photos and video revealing how afro based singer She Nkuti was arrested and handcuffed. Nigerian police trust them now, they must do their work. As she slapped their, 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 their colleague, they uh, disgrace him before the public, they will also disgrace you. Nigerian news recalled that Kuti was over the weekend involved in an altercation 
with a police officer on the Third Milan Bridge in Lagos and slapped the officer during the encounter. Following the incident, the Inspector General of Police, Usman Ali Karibaba, ordered the arrest of the singer for investigations. However, on Monday, the musician turned himself into the police where he was placed under arrest. The Lagos St State a Police Public Relations Officer, Benjamin Hunduin, confirmed this in a tweet. Hunduin, who posted pictures of Sin Kuti in Hancock, wrote, Afrobeat musician Sin Kuti in the early hours of today turned himself at the Lagos State Police Command headquarters in Kenya in company of his lawyer and family representative. He has been placed under arrest in line with the law. The command appreciates the, the public for their concern and assures that the ongoing investigation will be detailed, transparent, professionally pursued, and justice will be, man will be manifestly sought for all parties involved. However, reacting to the development, Sani said there was no need to handcuff Kuti because he told himself to the police. He don't know police, he don't know Nigerian police again, as if he had a learner. The former lawmaker, who took to his uh, Twitter to express his uh, opinion, said, Even though I have been handcuffed for many years, there's no reason to handcuff Shen, Shen, who has voluntarily surrendered himself to the authority, according to uh, Shehu Sani. May 29, some political allies trying to frustrate hand over to Tunumbu, Inspector General of Police. Inspector General of Police, Usman al Karibaba on Monday claimed that some political allies and some other unpatriotic individuals are planning to frustrate a civilian to civilian handover of power on May 29, 2023. According to him, some politicians uh, that the outcome of 2023 election did not favor are trying to frustrate the handover of power to the president select as well by issuing public threats that are direct, directed at instigating actions. And you are there watching. Shame on to you and shame to your office. The IGP, however, warned that the police, as well as other security agencies, will not allow anything to scuffle or scuttle the handover program as May 29 is a sacrosanct and democracy would be defended. Nobody has made it mandatory that 29th must be the swearing in. Let me correct you, Mr. Officer, who don't know his left from his right. He also warned that those planning uh, to form a uh, trouble to drop such plans and stay off the presidential inauguration because all the security agencies are on alert to prevent any trouble or disruption. Speaking to newsmen in Abuja, the general of police, Baba, said, following the successful conclusion of the 2023 general elections, it has been observed that some major political actors uh, that the outcome did not favor have been issuing public threats that are directed at instigating actions to frustrate the presidential inauguration ceremony on the 29th of May 2023. The Nigerian police and the National Intelligence Commit uh, Community have been closely monitoring the activities of do these political allies as well as their other elements who have formed themselves into unpatriotic brands uh, whose only fantasy in recent times is to subvert our national security interest. In so doing, they seem to be bent on the deploying extrajudicial and uh, undemocratic means to truncate our democracy heritage in advancement of their narrow personal political uh, considerations. The beauty of democracy lies not just in the freedom of the citizens, to freely exercise their franchise within the electoral cycle. It is always hand on the right of agreed political uh, actors to submit grievances on the electoral outcome to the judicial process of the constitutions. According to uh, Adamu uh, Baba Alakali, we are watching political actors, according to the same police officer. The IDP added that the, all political actors under the watch of security agencies and particularly those planning to scuffle the May 29 inauguration should, be, should, be, should take heed to the warnings that have been coming forth. 
He warned that anyone who defies the warning should be ready to face the full wrath of the law, as the police and other security agencies are only letting in their uh, resolve to defend democracy and ensure a huge free presidential inauguration on May 29, 2023. In his words, ladies and gentlemen, the imperative of peace in our national life cannot be overemphasized. Uh, sustenance of peace and security is even more expedient at this stage in our national democratic transition. Consequently, while the Nigerian police, in synergy with other security agencies and the intelligence community, continues to close monitor the activities of these political elements, it has become expedient to make some clear statements. Firstly, the Nigerian police hereby sternly warns all political actors with a subversive uh, agenda and their collaborators, particularly their foot soldiers, who they are exposing to the political radicalization and the extremism to henceforth jettison their ongoing premeditated uh, attempts to create tension within the national space with intention of drilling the 29th May of 2023 presidential inauguration ceremony. Secondly, any third persons, regardless of their political affiliations, who continuously engage in acts that are inimical to our nation's democratic and security interests, should not be in doubt on the firm determination of the Nigerian police. Under my watch, under my watch to closely collaborate with the law enforcement family and the intelligence community to defend our democracy, keep the internal security order stable and ultimately deploy our common unique assets towards guaranteeing the successful conduct of the presidential inauguration ceremony. Well, I have a question for this uh, so-called uh, IGP of police. So you are so com combatant like this to reply or to make statements. But when there is uh, anarchy in Lagos, when a single man come out to profile one side of the uh, uh, region, against voting for their preferred candidate. You says nothing. The Commissioner of Police in Lagos State says nothing. The supposed person of Lagos State, David Hunde, says nothing. Now you are out to tell us that political allies and those who were threatening to do this, to do that, they got them arrested. You are a failure. I swear to God, you are a completely failure to your office and to your generation. You have failed everybody. You have failed to tackle the insecurity in Nigeria. You have failed to deploy your men in the areas that have, that have been subjected to robbery and other uh, uh, heinous crimes. Yet, you are here telling us about doing one thing, one thing. Anyway, let me not use any uh, derogatory uh, statement. But with all due respect, sir, you have failed your family as well. Not mind that your family, no one is living in Nigeria. All of them are living abroad where security and everything is working. Yet, the makings for the general police under your nose things got spoiled yet you couldn't do anything i'm ashamed of you and i am ashamed of anyone that is called nigerian under nigerian security architecture you people have failed nigerians and you people have also failed yourself and your family and your entire generation and so shall it be so my wonderful people now here i go take drop my kayak because my voice will not allow me to continue I would love to give a one-hour uh, broadcast. But whatever it is, please, make sure I say, take this one to step down while I find something to do to my voice. Have a nice day. I'll be right back. Thank you. I'm signing out.